Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will continue with the study of irreducible representations of uh, SLN plus 1. So, we will actually construct very explicitly irreducible representation that, that are associated with actually given dominant weights. So, let us actually observe the following. So, here is the very important uh, proportion. So, we can actually use the tensor product in order to actually create new irreducible modules. So, what I mean by that, okay, of course, tensor product of two irreducible is not irreducible, okay. So, that is not that hard to see unless one of them are trivial. Uh, but what we can do, we can actually look at this highest weight sub representation inside the tensor product. So, that will actually give us uh, irreducible representations. So, let us actually make it very precise. So, let us say we have k number of highest weight g modules and say they are generated by v1 etcetera vk respectively. Okay. And their highest weights are given by lambda 1, etc., lambda k. So, this is the given data. So, v1 is generated by small v1, vi is generated by small vi, and the weight of vi is given by lambda i. So, the weight of small vi is given by lambda i. So, now we can actually look at the tensor product and take this natural element v1 etcetera vk, tensor etcetera vk inside this. Then one can easily conclude that this is indeed highest weight vector and not only it is highest weight vector with the weight lambda 1 plus etcetera plus lambda k. So, this is the highest weight vector of highest weight lambda 1 x plus etcetera lambda k. So, this just follows from small computation. If you take h acting on v 1 tensor etcetera v k, then this is given by h v 1 tensor etcetera v k plus etcetera plus v 1 tensor etcetera tensor h v k. So, h acts as like derivation. So, then this is exactly given by lambda 1 of h plus etcetera plus lambda k of h times v 1 etcetera v k. So, this is true for all h in h. So, that is why it has the weight lambda 1 plus etcetera lambda k. Now, if you compute again x acting on v1 etcetera v k, then you can easily see that again using replace h by x, then h v1 must be 0 and then h v k is 0 that implies this is 0 and this is true for all x in n plus. So, this proves that this natural vector that we are considering inside v1 tensor etcetera v k that is indeed highest weight vector. So, if you take the sub module generated by that u g v 1 tensor etcetera tensor v k and that is going to be highest weight representation, but from our previous observation we can easily see that this must be irreducible module and this irreducible module corresponds to the highest weight lambda 1 plus etcetera lambda k. So, this is irreducible module of course associated with lambda 1 plus extra lambda k. So, this is how one actually constructs all the irreducible representation corresponding to the given dominant weight lambda. So, now let us try to use this. So, if we use this observation, then we can easily see that given lambda which is coming from lambda plus 
one can write lambda as some m1 omega 1 plus etc plus some m n omega n where omega i is the fundamental weights. So, which are actually weights inside h star dual to the basis h i. Okay. So, since omega i is actually dual to h i, h s being basis of h, omega i will be linearly independent and it is basis of h star. Okay. So, given any lambda you can write it in terms of this omega i basis. Now, it is easy to see lambda of h i is m i those must be non negative integers. Okay. So, this actually tells you that if you are interested in constructing this v lambda that corresponds to lambda then it is enough to construct this fundamental representation which are nothing but v omega 1 etcetera v omega n. So, let us say we have constructed v omega 1 etcetera v omega n. So, this will be the first step. So, then one can immediately consider this v omega 1 tensor m 1 tensor etcetera tensor v omega n power tensor m n. Then if you take this v lambda, so that is going to sit naturally inside. Indeed, this v lambda is given by the submodule generated by the corresponding this uh, weight vectors. Okay. So, v 1 tensor m 1 tensor etcetera tensor v k tensor m k. So, this is the way one can construct for any given lambda dominant the irreducible module corresponding to that. So, this is this indeed proves the existence if we are able to construct this uh, fundamental representations, fundamental representations. Okay. So, this is actually kind of uh, very explicit. So, if, if one works out uh, for type A the, which is SLN plus 1, then we can easily see that the fundamental representations can be constructed using natural representation. So, let us consider the natural representation C n plus 1. So, this we call it V. So, this is the natural representation of G which is S L n plus 1. So, we already did the computation. Okay. We can easily see that. So, H i acting on this E 1 is going to be exactly epsilon 1 of H i E 1. If you think about it, it is exactly omega 1 of H i E 1. Okay. And obviously, x E 1 is 0 for all x come from n plus because n plus being all strictly upper triangular matrices. So, if you if you act it on E 1, it is going to be 0. So, this actually tells you that E 1 is indeed highest weight vector in C n plus 1, but we already verified C n plus 1 is actually irreducible representation. So, E 1 must generate C n plus 1. So, this is actually the generator of C n plus 1. So, that means uh, this C n plus 1 corresponds to V of omega 1. And I will leave it as exercise to prove the following. So, if you actually work with uh, the tensor product, so there is a natural sub representation of that called symmetric powers. So, if we take the symmetric powers of this C n plus 1, then it is naturally isomorphic to V of k omega 1. So, what we need to prove? We need to prove that uh, sim k of C n plus 1 is just a highest weight representation corresponding to the highest weight k omega 1. Then from the theory, we know that it must be irreducible representation corresponding to k omega 1. 
Indeed, uh, if we take uh, this natural generator, okay, so this is indeed sub module generated by this E1 tensor, etcetera, tensor E1 in the tensor product. You take this representation Cn plus 1, take k number of tensor copies, then inside that you look at the sub module generated by the te k tensor E1, etcetera, E1. So, that will be your symmetric power. So, now uh, one can actually uh, use this, okay. So, let us actually outline what the computation actually goes here in order to prove this. So, we already know what is the basis of uh, our uh, symmetric powers, okay. Let us recall. So, let us use this notation. So, just denote T of K1, etc., Kn by the summation E S1 tensor, etc., tensor E S K, where this S1, etc., S K, they are all coming from 1 to n plus 1 and the number of i appears in this expression. So, that must be exactly k i. So, that means number of j's that are equal to like let us say number of j such that s j equal to i. So, that is exactly k i. in this tuple S1, etcetera, SK, is K. So, we already seen that uh, if we take all this uh, TK1, etcetera, KN such that this K1 plus etcetera, KN is K. So, these elements form a basis. So, this form a basis for this symmetric powers. because they form a basis, uh, if you are interested in proving that the sub module generated by this E1 tensor etcetera E1 e, e is exactly this. So, then uh, then you need to actually get all the basis elements by applying this uh, y, y powers on this E1 tensor etcetera E n, because this E1 tensor extra E n that is going to be the highest weight vector, because that is obviously the highest weight vector inside your uh, tensor product. Uh, so, you cannot use any element from n plus or h to obtain new vectors. So, you have to use vectors from n minus to obtain the new vectors. So, let me just tell you how one actually get the vectors. So, this these are all exercise. So, first of all it is easy to compute the weight of this T of k 1 etcetera T uh, k n. The weight of this uh, T k 1 etcetera k n is nothing but k 1 epsilon 1 plus etcetera plus k n plus 1 epsilon n plus 1. And not only that, so if you take this y i acting on this uh, t k 1 etcetera k n plus 1. So, this is exactly given by, so it is uh, actually k i plus 1 plus 1 times something looks like this T only T k 1 etcetera k i minus 1 k i plus 1 plus 1 comma etcetera k n plus 1 0 otherwise. So, this happens if k i is greater than or equal to 1. So, basically you just drop the k i and then you subtract minus 1 from the previous one and then add 1 from the opposite one. So, note that the weight should actually kind of should match. Okay. So, basically the y i is going to decrease the weight by alpha i. Okay. So, if you, if you do the computation of weights, you can easily see that the weights matches. So, now using this, uh, you can actually actually get this uh, T 
t of k1 etc kn plus 1 from starting with this e1 tensor etc en. Note that uh, this t k 0 etc 0 is nothing but e1 tensor etc e1. So, this appears k times. Now, using this you can easily say that the t of k 1 etc k n is obtained by taking this t k 0 0 and repeatedly applying some y powers. So, exactly you will be applying y power n k n plus 1 divided by k n plus 1 factorial y n minus k n plus k n plus 1 divided by k n plus k n plus 1 factorial and so on y 1 power k 2 plus etcetera plus k n plus 1 divided by the factorial of that. So, basically you apply these powers to this t power t k 0. So, if you think about it, so these are all the lowering operators. So, we have to apply correct number of times to reach the other other vectors. Okay. So, this way you are actually able to go from the highest weight vector to other vectors. So, this indeed proves that uh, if you take this highest weight vector e 1 tensor etcetera tensor e 1 and then take the sub representation generated by that, that is going to be exactly the symmetric power k -th power. And uh, because this uh, highest weight representation is irreducible, so that would imply that the symmetric power is irreducible and, and obviously the highest weight is being k omega 1. So, the symmetric power is isomorphic to V of k omega 1. So, this is indeed some other way of constructing uh, the same representation. Okay. So, we have used the tensor products. So, now we will actually uh, construct uh, uh, other fundamental representations. Okay. So, maybe I will state it as a proportion. So, if you take any i which is, uh, so let us say any k which is less than or equal to n, then we can look at this alt k c power n. So, if you think about it, so this is indeed isomorphic to v of omega k. Okay. So, alt 1 c n, c n plus 1 is exactly c n plus 1. So, that corresponds to v of omega 1 and remaining alt powers you can see that, that they are naturally isomorphic to this v of omega k. So, what, what does it mean? It means alt k c n plus 1 is indeed highest weight representation corresponding to the highest weight omega k that is all we mean and the irreducibility comes for free. Okay. So, how one can prove this? Again, I will actually outline the proof. So, we already have the basis. So, basis is given by let us call it this u i 1 etcetera u i k. So, this is given by summation sin of sigma, sigma comes from S n plus 1 e i sigma 1 tensor etcetera tensor e i sigma k. So, this is going to be a basis. So, when you take the indexing set to be i 1 less than i 2 less than etcetera less than i k. So, because there should not be any repetitions. So, if you take these tuples and then run it over all these tuples u i 1 etcetera u i k. So, that will form a basis for alt k c n plus 1. So, that is obvious. So, now it is easy to compute what is the weight, the weight of this u i 1 etcetera u i k is given by epsilon i 1 plus etcetera plus epsilon i k. 
So, so if you are not comfortable with this, just put bar everywhere, okay? Because we are computing only the hedge weights. The same computation actually works for uh, do n plus one weights, okay? There is no difference. So now, uh, what will be the weight in of u one, two, etc. K? So that is going to be exactly epsilon one plus etc. Epsilon k, which is omega k. So it is not hard to prove that u1 etc uk is a highest weight vector. So that is a simple exercise, okay. So this is again simple enough to prove. So what is difficult is indeed getting all other elements ui1 etc uik from u12 etc k using the lawyering operators. Okay. So, the way to get it, I will just write the formula, then you can actually verify. So, if you take this u i 1 etc u i k, which can be obtained from u 1 etc u k by applying this successive lower operators. You take y i 1 minus 1, y again i 1 minus 2 and so on up to y 1 times y i 2 minus 1 and so on y up to y 2 and so on you go all the way to y i k minus 1 y i k minus 2 and so on y k and then you apply it on this vector. Note that i1 being strictly less than etc. strictly less than i k that implies i m is greater than or equal to m. Okay. So, that, that is why you are going from i1 minus 1 to all the way to 1 and then i2 minus 1 to all the way to 2 and so on. So, if you take this vector and then successfully apply these lowering operators, so then you are actually getting this vector. Okay. So, that tells you that uh, this alt alternating power is obtained as highest weight representation. The alt k of the C n plus 1 is naturally sum of to V of k omega 1, sorry V of omega k. So now, if you are interested in constructing the general uh, irreducible module corresponding to given lambda, so if you take lambda being dominant, then you can write it as, as I said, m1 omega 1 plus etc plus mn omega n, then, then consider this alt 1 cn plus 1 power again the tensor m1 tensor etc tensor alt k c n plus 1 power m k tensor alt n plus 1 c n plus 1 power tensor m n. up to this n. So, when you take alt n plus 1, then that becomes actually the trivial uh, representation. Okay. So, up to n it will be this. So, you consider the tensor, then consider the highest weight tensor product of highest weight vectors inside this tensor. Then that is going to be isomorphic to V lambda. Okay. So, this way we proved existence of given. So, this proves the existence of V lambda. Okay.
So, indeed uh, if you actually think about it the examples that we have seen. So, the trivial module corresponds to V0 and C n plus 1 corresponds to the omega 1 and the dual of this indeed corresponds to. So, if you identify with epsilon 1 basis then this is V of epsilon 1 then this corresponds to V of minus epsilon n plus 1. Okay, that that is the dual. So now, if you take S L n plus one, which is the adjoint representation, so that corresponds to indeed what is called the highest weight, highest root, so which is uh, epsilon one minus epsilon n plus one. I'm writing everything in terms of epsilon basis. Okay, you restrict to uh, H. So, now if you take this alt k c n plus 1, if you think about it in, ter in terms of the epsilon a basis, then this is exactly equal to v of epsilon 1 plus etcetera plus epsilon k. Okay, which is same as as a SLN module V of omega k. Okay, so, this is uh, the translation between the epsilon i basis and uh, the thing. So, now uh, actually like, so this is actually gives us a very explicit construction in terms of the tensor products. But uh, D. N. Verma indeed uh, proposed uh, some abstract way of constructing these irreducible modules. So, he introduced what is called Verma module and then he actually identified all these uh, irreducible representations as quotients of Verma modules. So, we will be actually uh, uh, seeing that construction as well. Uh, that construction actually can be done for any lambda not necessarily lambda being dominant. So, note that in this construction we have used the fact that lambda being dominant because we need to take the tensor powers okay, corresponding to this m i's. So, m i's being non-negative integers used very much otherwise we would not be able to consider this tensor products okay, the corresponding tensor products. So, but Verm, D and Verma proposed this idea of uh, Verma module which actually can be defined for any lambda in H star. So, for any lambda in H star we define this Verma modules. So, which will be defined to be actually highest weight representation of highest weight lambda. So, but this is somewhat universal highest weight representation. So, these Verma modules are the universal highest weight representations associated with uh, lambda. So, which we call it widget of lambda. Okay. So, then one can actually prove that there is unique irreducible quotient of widget lambda. So, there is an unique quotient of eject unique irreducible quotient of eject lambda which we call it uh, v lambda. So, which is denoted as and of course, there should not be any confusion between uh, this lambda being dominant and so on. Okay. If lambda is dominant then we will prove that this V lambda is indeed finite dimensional. So, since it is finite dimensional so this will be naturally isomorphic to the irreducible model that we constructed before. Okay. So, we indeed established this one to one correspondence. So, from lambda plus 2 the set of all s 
set of fall irreducible five dimensional representations of sln plus 1 modulo the isomorphisms so the map is given by lambda goes to the bracket v of lambda and we already proved that this correspondence is one to one correspondence okay so now uh, verma actually introduce this uh, verma module in order to construct uh, this irreducible uh, highest weight representation for any given lambda in hs star so that's the beauty of verma verma's construction and that universal construction indeed allows us to actually uh, to deal with uh, some infinite dimensional irreducible module okay so indeed we will prove that it's a theorem that this v lambdas coming from this verma modules they are finite dimensional if and only if the lambdas must be dominant weights okay so this is indeed a very deep theorem that uh, we prove uh, in the coming classes okay so this is where we are heading with uh, the with the five dimensional theory okay so this verma construction is uh, somewhat very subtle and important because that construction works for any uh, semi simple algebras i'll stop here uh, we will continue with uh, verma's construction in the next class thank you